Did you hit it, Leah? Okay, I did right now. Oh. Hey, Mark, I might ask you. I might ask you a favor later. Sure. I, I wanted to ask her before we went live, but I think she went live already. I don't want. We're to, live now. Questions. We're on. I ask you. It ain't bad. It's good. What's the favor? Are you sure? You want to hear it? Yeah. So you know, you're you're you're, you're like. You're multi-generational. Everybody loves you. All these generations love you. You're a likable guy. And so is, uh, you know, Mario Lopez. And I know you hang out with him. And I was wondering yeah. if you could ask him for us if he would like to come on here and do interviews. Oh, absolutely. He would do that in a second. <laughs> please, please. I can actually uh, I'll try to FaceTime while we're on. Yeah, yeah, FaceTime. It'd be great. I want to I wanna really have him on here. Let him, let, let him know, you know, share his he, uh, he really, really, really loves our military. You know, uh, Mario's a good, good dude, good family man. <clears throat> you know, let me uh, let me try to call him real quick. All right. My phone is on the glitch. He's actually been working uh, from home. Has he? Yeah. Hold on, I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna share this right now. What's up, buddy? What's going on? Hey. What's he doing? Right now, I'm talking to my friends from the military exchange. What's up? What's up, Mario? Everybody from from, from the military exchange, they want to uh, do uh, an interview with you at some point. I said, man, my God loves the military. Loves our people. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you so much for your service. I'd love to do that. I'll get the info from Mark, and we'll we'll set it up. So I, I, I'd be uh, honored and look forward to it. Hey, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, you no problem. It. All right, buddy. Mm. Okay, man, let me know. Uh, yeah, right. I'll see you Friday. Okay, buddy. Bye. Take care. <clears throat> hey, so... Thank you. Yeah, just put it. So we're live here. We're live here. If you've been watching, we just... Uh, uh, we probably got Mario Lopez up next for an interview. But today, we got, we got someone special. But before I get to Mark, I just want to introduce Julie and Leah Matthews, my co-host. Julie and Leah, how you doing? Hi, Chief. Hey, Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. You guys look lovely today. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so, so before we uh before we get started, Julie, I usually ask Julie to introduce the guest, but she is I don't know what happened. She asked me to introduce. She's very nervous. She's met you like three or four times, Mark. I don't know what she's nervous about. So she asked me to introduce you. So I'm gonna get this going. Uh, we have a very special guest today. And I'm sure he's gonna boost your spirits. He's one of Hollywood's biggest stars. You've probably seen him in movies like Basketball Diaries, Transformers, Lone Survivor, uh, Daddy's Home. And of course, most recently, and I know all of you haven't been to the theater lately, you've probably been at home watching Netflix. You've probably seen him on Spencer Confidential. He's a staunch supporter of the military community. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Mark Wahlberg. Hey guys, thank you so much. Thank you for the warm welcome. More importantly, thank you for all that you do. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys. So uh, anything you want to know or need to know, or want to ask me, uh, feel free, or I could just, you know, continue to uh, spread all my love and, and appreciation for all of you guys, uh, your families, everybody. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, I've had the, the, the opportunity to visit many a base and, and many a people and people have been deployed and their families and their loved ones and uh, I never ever could thank you guys enough. So God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, thank Mark, you so for much. joining us. Go ahead. My Chief. pleasure. I just want to give a real quick message to everybody watching. Um, drop a note in the comments and let us know where you're watching from. Uh, we'll let if you have any questions or comments for Mark, we'll read those off throughout the interview. Um, and go ahead and start your watch parties. Hey, Mark, so let's get this started, right? We're going to, we're going to ask, you know, the, the first question here, which is how, are you, how have you been doing during, during this pandemic, doing the family? What's life been like for you? Um, well, I was, I was in uh, Berlin, Germany, about to start a sh uh, to shoot a movie, a movie called Uncharted. <clears throat> and we was at literally our first day of shooting and they said they were pulling the plug and we, we needed to get home right away. Um, so I've been home, uh, that was on March 16th. I've been home since, uh, just spending quality time with my, with my loved ones, with my wife and my kids. 
um, you know, uh, learning now to be able to communicate um, with people via Zoom and FaceTime and all that stuff, uh, business stuff. Wahlburgers, uh, we had to we close to, like, I think 20 stores. We've been feeding people, uh, doing, you know, curbside delivery and, and that stuff, to, and feeding people uh, in Michigan to the hospitals and now in Massachusetts and places where we're open and being able to help people on the front lines. Uh, all of our F45 gyms have been closed, so we're trying to encourage people to exercise uh, no matter where they are um, and keep up with their, with, their, with their mental health and their physical health and their spiritual health. Uh, you know, it's been probably, I don't know how many decades uh, since I haven't been able to go to church, but, you know, we're praying here at home and, and we're uh, taking quality time to, to be with our family and just trying to do, I know people seeing a lot of silly stuff, uh, uh, Chief uh, was, was being silly earlier talking about how I was losing my street credibility because I was uh, getting pedicures and manicures for my daughter, but <laughs> I, uh, I posted one video of my daughter. <clears throat> Uh, doing uh, the Joe with the Exotic Tiger guy. Yeah. Yes, so, we uh, saw that. She made this video, and she was so upset that, that, that I had posted it. But everybody that I know that's working in hospitals, uh, especially like in Beaumont and Michigan, um, you know, they were calling me and saying, wow, after a 12 hour shift, it really made me smile and made me laugh. And so anything that we can do uh, to entertain people, to bring a little bit of joy, a little bit of comfort during these times, we should certainly be doing, you know, we don't need yet another actor telling people how to live their lives and, and you know, when when there's going to be a cure and who's doing what and, and why, entertain people, make people laugh, make people smile. And uh, so we've been just, you know, this is a new normal. <clears throat> We're all kind of hanging in there together. Um, but, you know, really, really keeping, you know, uh, everybody who's on the front lines and my thoughts and my prayers. There are so many people making so much sacrifice and putting themselves at risk and, uh, you know, can't help but think about them every single day. Excellent. Thank you. So it sounds like, Mark, that the family is holding up well. Um, you're home and getting to spend more time together. Um, we, you know, we follow you on social media. We've seen your videos with your manicure and your TikToks. Um, so you guys are enjoying this family See, time together. Kicked out of the TikTok thing, though, right? The <laughs> first one, you notice, I try to get in the front. My daughter, like, she loves to hog the camera. And then the second one, I just had to peek in there. And you know, my wife was dancing, so she was, the, you know, it's very attractive. So I gave her a little pat on the bottom. So she had her permission. <laughs> and then after that, I was banned. I'm out. So you won't see me in too many TikToks now. <laughs> So um, back in December, Mark, we welcomed we welcomed you and your brother Paul to the new Wahlburgers at yes. Ramstein. Uh -huh. We were Leah and I. I got this shirt there at the preview party, and I got one for Leah. Chief, did you not get the memo that we were wearing our Wahlburgers gear today? Thanks, appreciate well, it. My shirt. Where's, where's your shirt? My Chief? shirt. <laughs> Come on, Chief. What what an amazing event that was. Uh, you know, again, I was. Uh, I was in Europe, I was shooting in London at the time, uh, making a movie called Infinite, and then I was looking forward to spending time in Berlin and, and on the weekends going over and visiting at Ramstein. Um, but we'll be back there soon. Um, you know, as soon as things get back to normal, I'll be back there visiting people on the base and spending as much time there as possible. They love that. You tend to draw a crowd. And so how is your big expanded family doing? Um, you know, your brothers, your mom, are, are you able to talk with them? They're yeah. doing good. Yeah, I talk to my mom every day. I'm trying to make sure that she really understands the importance of, you know, being indoors and social distancing. She's like the queen of the neighborhood. <clears throat> she lives um, in this neighborhood with a lot of neighbors. And so she's visiting people and she's like, oh, my brothers and them are having to really control her and give, you know, go to the store for her and get her all the things that she needs. But, you know, really encouraging her to stay inside. And she's uh, she's a social butterfly, so it's hard for her. But I speak with her every single day. And I have been for, I don't know, one day she said, call your mother more often. This was maybe four years ago. Every single day since then, I've talked to her. That's really sweet. Like <clears throat> when I even get up, the first thing I do is call her. That's really sweet. Mark, oh, we're... Holy Express. Holy Express. Uh-oh. Oh. Hi. Hello. Hi, Grace. This is Joey. This is Joey. Hey, Joey. How you doing? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, and she uh, she's really been missing her horse. 
Daisy May, but uh, Grace is now taking it upon herself to reach out to all the horse lovers all over the world and uh, keeping everybody connected and creating a whole new community of horse lovers. So that's awesome. Yeah. That's so great, Grace. <laughs> what do you say? Thank you. Aww. You're welcome. Polite, too. <laughs> Cutie. Oh, my God. Right away. Right away. There she goes. She's adorable, Mark. Um, hey, we're all big fans of yours on social media. That's what I'm saying. Chief, I can't say no to her. <laughs> you can't, you're right. You can't. You know, street credibility. Get no, the street cred. Okay. It's over. Yeah. And, no, no, no. Anybody, you know, uh, be, you know, we all know being a man is somebody who, you know, does the right thing. Um, you know, the whole tough guy persona was gone a long time ago. A man is somebody who is a devout husband, father. Uh, you know, friend, neighbor. Um, people are really starting to understand uh, who the real heroes in the world are and who we should be looking up to. And you see a mom of four or five going to the hospital, working 12 hours a day, putting herself at risk um, to take care of somebody. Uh, you know, obviously we've known for a long time what our brave men and women in our military uh, and the service community do. But uh, people out there are really kind of stepping it up, and it's nice to see. And hopefully, the world will be a better, better place for it. I'm sure they appreciate hearing that, Mark. Kind yeah. words. Excellent. Hey, Mark, we see that you're as dedicated as ever um, to your physical fitness. Do you have any tips, especially while everybody is isolating? Um, why is it more important now that, to be fit than ever? Uh, you know, people can get down and get into a rut and find themselves sitting on the couch eating. You know, it's important to stay as active and mobile as possible. Um, <clears throat> you know, for me, I mean, I found myself, you know, I'm sleeping in late. I'm not doing the whole 2 a.m. thing anymore. You know, it's like I, I'm sleeping in until I woke up today at 930. You know, I went to bed last night at 10 o'clock. I was found myself watching, you know my wife and, and my daughter, you know, they all got control, remote control. And so, you know, they're watching Lifetime movies and all this stuff. And I'm just, like, it, it, it's different right now. But, uh, you know, I just, I get up every day and once I work out, I feel fantastic. You know, it kind of, it kind of just re-energizes me and, you know, makes me realize that, you know, this is, uh, this is actually a time to do more, to learn more, to connect more. Uh, so I've been reading and, and doing a lot of things that, uh, that I need to do. Uh, I should be learning another language right now too, but there's not enough time of the day to do it all. But uh, hopefully people are just utilizing this time wisely. You know, uh, it really is a time to connect and to take care of yourself. And, you know, uh, between my, my spiritual growth and my, and my physical uh, regimen, I'm, uh, I'm in a good place. We have a, so, so sorry, Chief, we have a question on Facebook. Lisa Solis is asking, when is your next live workout? And that ties right into just what you were saying about working out. Well, we might have to do that sooner rather than later. You know, I know <laughs> um, we've been trying to put out some videos and stuff and show people some exercise and stuff that they could do even with their own body weight, um, making makeshift weights if you're lucky enough to have, you know, some dumbbells or some kettlebells. Um, so I'm going to probably, I'll probably do something uh, next week. You know, again, we, we did something where we were all kind of self-quarantining here and we put out a video and uh, some people were getting mad. Obviously there were comments saying, you know, you're not as far apart as you should be. Or this is this is unsafe. Uh, we're making sure that, you know, uh, you, as you met Cindy earlier, anybody who's here, she's checking my temperature three or four times a day. She's so paranoid about, <laughs> about uh, you know, being healthy and being safe. So, but, you know, I want to, I still want to stay connected to everybody. And I hope that, um, you know, I want the world to go back to being as normal as possible. You know, I think, imagine not being able to go and watch a movie in a theater or go to a concert or, you know, um, go to a gym and work out. I mean, I love the idea of working out with other people and being inspired by others and motivated by others and connecting. You know, connection is the most important thing. You know, we just went down to Pendleton and we did a workout with F45 uh, and we had, you know, 500 people there active servicemen and women and their spouses it was amazing it was like you know i couldn't have been more more inspired and more excited about you know connecting with people so hopefully we get back to that as soon as possible so mark let's go down that let's go down that path of uh, physical fitness you know in the military people got to stay fit to fight even during this 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 pandemic uh, mm -hmm. a question brought up was is it possible to share your meal plans uh quote unquote i need them abs <laughs> uh, you know what i um <clears throat> 
I had gone through a phase. I was like very stubborn about how I ate. I was doing, you know, uh, small meals, all protein, you know, every two and a half, three hours. And I was getting in great shape uh, on the exterior, but I wasn't really feeling good. I was getting, you know, a little lethargic. And um, towards the end of the day, after like a three hour workout, then I have to shoot for 12 hours. Um, so I was barely getting through the day. And then I realized that I started getting a leaky gut. I wasn't absorbing all the protein and wasn't creating lean muscle. So I started going plant-based uh, right after the new year. Um, and I've been plant-based ever since, and I feel fantastic. So, you know, I'm having like uh, Beyond Meat and the Possible Burger at Wahlburgers. I, I can't even tell the difference. It's fantastic. But um, so I've been doing that. I was going to do that through Lent, and then I just kept going. You know, I'm starting to feel better. I'm sleeping better. I've got less inflammation. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing right now. But I always do whatever is required for the, the role that I'm preparing for. Um, so, you know, if they say, hey, we got to get as out of shape as possible and you're playing a guy who sits on the couch, drinks beer, and, and you know, eats chicken wings all day. I'm going to do that, too. I do whatever the job requires. But I do, you know, have the preferences to feel good, uh, more importantly than looking good. You know, if I feel good, then, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm not training for a movie, I'd rather be exercising and eating right to feel good. That, that that's a great answer a uh, plant-based you heard it here first ladies and gentlemen right yeah. I, did, you know, is, I don't know chief did you see that documentary um game changer on netflix i have not should i watch it <laughs> i would definitely recommend watching it i think arnold schwarzenegger some other people were involved in producing it um <laughs> you know and there was a guy on there who and there's a lot of world-class athletes on there who are all plant-based uh and there's a guy on there who was uh they kept saying wow you're strong as an ox you're strong as an ox you know, how do you do it? And he's all plant-based. And he goes, he goes, well, I've never seen an oxy a burger or a steak. I only see him eating grass, you know? And it was like, I was like, whoa, wait a second here. And then I started looking into it. it it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. And I do crave uh, chicken every once in a while or, you know, a nice big steak. But I, I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm, there's something to this plant-based thing that's worth checking out. All right, let's let's go down this path. So a lot of people are asking, what's your favorite food at your restaurant, Wahlburgers, and why? Well, I would say I would always order the Hour Burger, the Donnie Burger, the Fiesta Burger, and the Haddock Burger, and I would have like a half of each one. Um, but like I said, the great thing about it is we have the Impossible Burger. We have all types of healthy all offerings and alternatives. Um, my mom's macaroni salad. French fries, the sweet tater tots, you know, like now I'm eating even more carbs than I would normally eat. You know, I'm eating a lot of pasta and stuff. And so, yeah, I would, I would say I was always kind of, uh, have a small piece of, of as much as, a, as I could, I would order like five or six burgers at a time. So down this path of Wahlburgers, there's like tons of questions. I can't capture everyone's name, right? Yeah. They're asking about Wahlburgers. I know a, a Maxine TV, Maxine Reyes TV asked, is Wahlburgers, you know, coming to Tampa? Could you let us uh, kind of tell us after this pandemic is over? Where I mean, you already got Tom Brady in Tampa. You got the Gronk now. <laughs> of course, we got to bring Wahlburgers to Tampa. I mean, man, we might as well just change the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers name to the Patriot. Oh my gosh! Wow. <clears throat> I was thinking about it today. I was like, they got the whole squad down there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> hey, Amen. Uh, but. Uh, no, I, uh, I plan on visiting uh, down there in Tampa soon. I got a couple friends who just moved down there now, so I got to go visit them. Uh, and, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully be bringing the Wall Burgers to Tampa soon. We have uh, one in Orlando and Waterford Lake. So so another another thing uh, maybe a lot of uh, viewers don't know is we do have a Wall Burgers at Ramstein, Germany, which Julie yeah. hinted at earlier. That's still open, and we're serving to go to go boxes and still doing well. So that's a good sign that it's staying open for the troops to support yeah. them. Um, and also, we have another Wahlburgers opening up at Joint Base Lewis and Court. There's a lot of questions. They're asking when, when, when. With the pandemic going on right now, it looks like a 2021, spring 2021 date. So I just wanted everyone in the audience to know. And I guess the question will be, if when it's open at JBLM, are you going to go out there to visit the troops out of JBLM? Oh, 100%. Absolutely. I tell you. Um... You know, some of the most memorable experiences I've had are visiting visiting with our military. You know, when I went uh, 2010 to Afghanistan, Kabul and Camp Leatherneck, I mean, I, you know, I will never ever forget those experiences. Those were, were things that uh, 
really, really opened my eyes. Um, it's one thing to understand, you know, like visiting Fort Benning or somewhere, and seeing people, you know, uh, in in, uh, in in the U.S. at a military base is another thing to see what what it's like, you know, in the middle of uh, you know an active war zone. And people uh, are like literally, our children have traveled over there and living there and putting their lives on the line. I mean, I was. I was blown away. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep going down this path of, uh, of of fits of fight because a lot of people are asking. So for your roles, is it harder to gain weight? Somebody, uh, a gentleman asked, I can't remember who. Is it harder to gain weight or harder to lose weight for a role? At 48, it's it's very easy to gain weight. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the metabolism slows down. Um, but. Uh, but you know, I love I love the idea of having a challenge of take, taking you know three or four months before I'm even starting to shoot a movie to prepare for a movie, uh, the physical preparation as well as the, the mental preparation of reading and learning my lines and be becoming the character, all that stuff. Um, but it's certainly easier at this stage of the game to put on weight. I think uh, you know for for everybody the metabolism slows down a little bit and you know, uh, but you know. I think it's it's so much easier to stay in shape than it is to get in shape. That's why I don't want people taking this time off and saying, oh, well, I'll come back when I can go back to the gym. Do everything, anything you can right now to maintain. Um, and, of course, people who are staying ready to uh, to fight the real fight, well, you know, we, we know the mentality of, of, of those brave men and women and how focused and disciplined they are. Um, I, I, would, I would be asking them for advice. They're, they're the real experts. All right, all right. I mean, they look up. I think that a lot of fans look up to you, and they see, you know, uh, the abs. You know, Spencer Confidential. You built, you know, all the movies you've been in. You just, you always stay in shape, and it's, you know, it's kind of motivating. A lot of yeah. it. Hey, keep that mindset, right? It's all about that mindset. Yeah, I absolutely. I think, uh, you know, I've got. I was watching Michael Jordan's documentary the other day, The Last Dance, yeah. and you know, Michael Jordan wasn't supposed to be the guy. He only became the guy because he worked harder than everybody else. Uh, and we, you know, Michael is, a, I consider him a, a, a dear friend and we share that same mentality. You know, me coming from music and coming from Boston and not, not really having certainly no uh, theater background or any of that stuff. I wasn't supposed to be in the position that I'm in. I just, I just got to this place because I was willing to work that much harder than everybody else. Um, and you know, that, that, that says a lot. There's anything you can't achieve if you're willing to go and do the work. So that's why I, I keep that mentality. I mean, I'm more hungry and more disciplined now than I've ever been. Um, and I don't kind of sit back and dwell on the past of things that I've accomplished. I look forward to the things that I want to achieve now and, uh, and, and always trying to, to take myself to the next level, both personally and professionally. Leah, you have any questions? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm listening to Mark and I'm watching. There's like I, so many questions. He likes Mark. It's crazy. <laughs> I do see one. I do see one um, from Army. MWR, um, their world-class athlete program, they're asking, um, they're doing home-based workouts every day, Monday through Friday. These athletes are training for the Olympics, which as you know, is postponed until 2021. They are still training and sharing how they stay in shape with our army communities. Would love for you to do a workout with them. Oh, absolutely. I would love to, if they could send something to me via Instagram or something, I would love to post it so I could share it with all of my followers. I know they would love to see what what these world class uh, world class athletes are doing. Awesome, we'll, we'll share that with them. Hey, so so Mark, you know you're you're one of our first guests here uh, on this entertainment series. It's, it's kind of something we put together, you know, to provide people a venue to kind of you know entertainment venue via our exchange webpage. And mm -hmm. I know uh, we're looking to have Marcus Luttrell join us soon. Uh, he's a good buddy of yours. I know. Yeah. Book right there, Marcus. The choice. He's a good buddy of yours. Can you talk to, to us about your friendship with Marcus and uh, your role in the film yeah. Lone Survivor? Absolutely. Um, you know, I had, uh, it's funny because I had just come from when you talk about the physical preparations, as we were talking about earlier, Chief. We said uh, I did a movie, I knew I was going to be doing Pain and Gain. Uh, I did four movies in a row. I did Broken City, Pain and Gain, Two Guns with Denzel Washington, then right into Lone Survivor. Each of them like back to back to back to back with very little time in between, but drastic physical changes and transformations for all four roles. Um, I was trying to cheat during Broken City and just get it, start getting as big as I could to play a bodybuilder in, um, in Pain and Gain. 
And then the director was like, no, 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 I want you to be thin and ripped for Broken City. So I said, okay, this is gonna be hard. So as soon as I finished that movie, I just started packing on the pounds. And people say, oh, it must be fun that you can eat whatever you want. It's fun for a while, everything's fun for a couple of weeks, and then it just becomes tedious, and, and then it becomes uh, boring and strenuous. So I would, because I would eat at seven o'clock, I would go to bed, I'd wake up at 10 o'clock to eat again, and I'm still full from the last meal. Then I'm stuffing down pancakes or weight gainer, and then going back to bed and waking up and eating every three hours. So then I went into Two Guns where I was still slowly trying to lose the weight, and then I got to Lone Survivor. And Lone Survivor was just a completely different experience altogether. I remember when I first met Marcus, <clears throat> he wouldn't even make eye contact with me. We met uh, in New Mexico. We had an event for, uh, for uh, families um, of, you know, the Deeds families, the Axelson families, and the Murphy family were there uh, getting to meet the guys that were playing uh, their sons in the film. And then I was there with Marcus, and it was just kind of really kind of awkward. Um, and, uh, and then we started going to the training and I was tired after the other three movies, but I was like, Oh God, I got to step up. I mean, Marcus was out there carrying equipment and everything and all the stuff that he'd been through, all the injuries that he'd incurred. So I was like, wow, I got to really step up here. And it wasn't until he did, cause he didn't care about my resume. He didn't care about the things I had accomplished as an actor. He wanted to see what I was going to bring to the table and how we were going to tell the story. And, and then when he kind of saw how committed I was and what we were doing in, in honor of everybody who had uh, been affected by Operation Red Wing and, and the brothers and the team members that he lost. Then, you know, he slowly started like talking to me and then we became close and, you know, we, we talk or communicate via text and videos like now pretty much on a daily basis. I mean, he's sending messages to us from Texas cheering us up. I don't know if you guys saw on my Instagram him riding in his in his uh, off-road vehicle singing Good Vibrations. I mean, he's, uh, he's he has also embraced the idea of trying to entertain people and keep people smiling. Um, but, you know, I really had to earn that, that, that respect. And once you are welcomed into a community like the SEALs, which is such a tight-knit community, um, you know, then you're you're kind of you're in there for life, and uh, I really, 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 I've always gravitated towards the true stories, the movies that I've made uh, that meant the most to me were always me depicting real people and real events, and nothing more important and nothing uh, more special than being a part of that story and uh, and playing Mark Luttrell. What an honor that was! Um, I, it, it it afforded me so many opportunities to meet and thank so many people when I went to the Medal of Honor recipients gala in uh, in Tennessee. And I was getting medals given to me from people who were uh, receiving the Medal of Honor, um, whether it was in Vietnam or Iraq. I mean, it was just, it was all the living recipients of the Medal of Honor were there. And, and so many other events like that that have just touched my heart and, uh, and made me feel uh, very special. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a special guy. Actually, pull that picture. I have so many pictures of me and Marcus um, and from Lone Survivor, but I want to share this picture with you. This is in my office. I look at this picture every day. I don't know if you guys can see it. So that's my son, Michael, in the middle. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. And it's that's awesome. Oh, wow. The photo shoot for the, uh, for the movie after we're doing the movie. After we made the movie, we were out promoting the movie and uh, sharing our experience. But um, yeah, this is one of my favorite photos right awesome. here. That's a nice pick. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, my little is that your dog. Whose dog is that? That's Marcus, service dog. Okay, all right. It's Rigby. I can't. There's a bright light, like right into there. There we go. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> I hope the audience sees that. Yep. I remember we were uh, <clears throat> we were at a, uh, a TV a studio in New York City, and that dog goes everywhere with Marcus. And New York City, you know, big uh, you know news uh, broadcasters, they're like, that dog can't come in here. And then Marcus said, Well, I ain't coming in. I said, Well, you better let that dog in here. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. And of course, the dog came in. It was all good. But it was. I, I've I've. Uh, 
I've had the honor of meeting a lot of people, but uh, nobody more special than Marcus, I can tell you that. How kind of work was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. Well, we know, we know you love the military, Mark, and all who serve our country. Can you talk about your family's legacy of service? Uh, yeah, well, my dad. My dad served uh, in the Army. My dad was in, in Germany uh, during the Korean War. And um, he sold, told us so many stories, we didn't know if they were real or not, you know? I mean, by his account, you know, he had uh, single-handedly won every war there was. Um, but he always, he always told me, my, uh, my father-in-law, well, my brother's, my, bro my brother Arthur's first wife, he was a uh, gunnery sergeant. His uh, son was a sergeant also in the Marines. And I, when I had gotten into trouble, um, everybody thought the best thing for me would be to go into the service, right? To turn my life around. I had been in and out of trouble and obviously gotten arrested and uh, went and uh, tried to sign up for the Marine Corps. I hadn't had my diploma yet. So I was figuring I was gonna work on my diploma. And in the meantime, I started working on my music and everything else. The music thing started happening first, which kind of sidetracked my rest of my plans about going back to school and getting my diploma. I hadn't gone back to get my diploma until I got it when I was 42. Uh, which was not an easy thing to do, but I wanted to make sure that I had that um, for a number of reasons, especially for my children. If they said, well, Dad, you didn't go to school, why do I need to go to school? It was the biggest regret of my life, not finishing school and getting my education and then furthering my education. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but my dad, my dad and all his stories. Uh, my dad was also a teamster and, uh, you know, I take a lot of pride in that too. Um, you know, we know a lot of guys who, who drive a truck and you know, make that sacrifice as well. You know, you think about people who are still out there now, making sure that people are getting their supplies and getting the goods that they need and everything else. It's like sometimes you just take those things for granted, you know. Uh, people working, you know, at the, at the AFI stores, you know, who are like trying to just provide people the necessities right now and putting themselves in harm's way, you know. Uh, at the exchange, you know, you don't like understand until something like this happens. You know, what you, what you really, we should be appreciative of and grateful. Hey, Mark. I, I agree, Mark, right? Because, you know, I'm at headquarters. I work at headquarters. Yeah, we're working from home. Easy for us, right? But the, the, the rest of 30,000 other associates are out at the front lines, you know, serving the customers, serving the people who need most exposing themselves to, yeah. to a lot of different people which carry risk. So yeah. definitely thank you for those kind words, you know, uh, uh, to pass that along to, those, to, our, to our associates and, of course, all the other people out there who are taking care of, of everyone across the nation. Mm -hmm. Mark, uh, you're getting a lot of like and likes and loves on our social media live feed. Um, would you like to take a moment to just share some words of inspiration um, for the military community? At the, is there anything we want to say? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, first of all, thanking the soldiers, the airmen, the sailors, the Marines, the National Guard, the reserves, the Coast Guard members, to keeping our nation safe. I mean, it's their spouses, their families. I, I, uh, I've had the luxury of meeting people who have family members who are deployed and really get to talk to them and see how uh, their commitment and what they have to do and the sacrifices that they make. Um, you know, every chance I get, and I've been to, to many, many bases, um, and people always thank me for my time. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. I mean, my time is meaningless compared to the sacrifice that they make. So every opportunity I get to thank all of them, I do that. And I and I, I will continue to do that. Like I said, um, you know, when I landed, I flew, uh, you know, to Kabul, um, you know, in 2010, and I walked across the parking lot, and you know, I got put into an armored car, and we went on to, uh, you know, a C-130, and flew from base to base, and, and and seeing the brave men and women from all over our country who had left their homes and their comfort of their homes to defend our country. I mean, it really, it really changed the way I looked at things. Um, and I thought I knew and understood until I went that far uh, into that part of the world um, to really see what it's like, you know? And um, so, uh, yeah, so much gratitude, so much appreciation. And uh, anybody who is out and deployed now, God, we just pray. And I promise you every single day, you guys are in my thoughts and my prayers and hope you come home safe and soon because uh, we all need to be with our loved ones. So, Mark, we know that you understand the exchange mission. We have been honored to have you visit us at Fort Benning and at Ramstein, as well as our headquarters in Dallas. Mm -hmm. so we have about 33,000 associates around the world. 
We're considered mission essential, so most of our locations are still open to serve warfighters and their families. 85% of our workforce is connected to the military in some way. What words of encouragement do you have for Exchange Associates during this time? Yeah, well, thank you so much for your work uh, and, and, and your sacrifice. I know um, these could be scary times. Just make sure that you're staying as safe as possible um, and know how much we appreciate you guys being out there. Again, you know, uh, somebody would think of, you know, somebody putting themselves at risk by going and working uh, at an exchange store. But I mean, in, these, in this day and age, I mean, that's exactly what's happening. Uh, so thank you, but please stay safe. And uh, thank you so much for your hard work and your sacrifice. We really love you guys. That's gonna mean so much to the, the our associates. Thank you for that. Um, you're getting in, obviously incredible uh, feedback here on Facebook. Um, Eddie Hill, he's one of our drivers. He says, thank you for the shout out for the truck drivers that you just gave. Um, Eddie is one of our favorite truck drivers. He is, <laughs> yeah. he's a fave. He, um, so he thanks you. Um, just getting a lot of people saying thank you for your support thank you for your support of the military and a lot of questions also about performance inspired and if you can talk about what's kind of coming up for that do you have anything you can share with us performance inspired wise yeah. a lot of people are asking we're, we're, we want to donate a bunch of product as well to people um you know that are working on the front lines i know people have been donating meals and stuff but i also want to try to you know remind everybody to eat as healthy as possible um, so we're, we're donating bars and we're coming up with new products and stuff like that. And we just want to, again, provide great products that are going to get people the best results and get people in shape the honest and hard way, you know, but natural products that people can really, really, uh, you know, see their goals being reached and achieved in their fitness journey. There was a, another comment here from, from Jeff Neer, and uh, I thought it was a great movie. I don't know if a lot of people talked about it. I, I enjoyed it. He says, thank you for making Instant Family. My wife and I adopted our two older kids and definitely can relate to a lot of the story. Oh, God bless you. Yes, it's it's based on a true story. I, I think it's one of the more powerful films that I've made. Um, you know, you have so many kids in foster care that may never be adopted. And so, um, uh, I had actually been to an event in uh, Boston at Fenway Park. I mean, it's kind of like a, it's like a real meet and greet where people are meeting potential children that they'll adopt. And I met a kid who was probably 14 years old and he had two other siblings in the system. He goes, look, I'm 14. Nobody's going to adopt me, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to about to, I'm a, I'm a head in school. I'm going to graduate. I'm going to get, um, because my grades are so good, I'm going to get to go to college somewhere. I'm going to get a scholarship and I'm going to take care of my family and I'm going to become something. And I was just so moved by this kid. I was like, wow, I, was, I just found it to be so impressive. It was, it was really inspiring. And then cut to, you know, I don't know how many years later, Sean Anders, who was our writer director, was telling me the story of how he and his wife adopted three kids. And this kind of, and then they were like, they were completely freaked out. It was a love fest at first. Then they're like, oh my God, how do we get rid of these kids? Like, we didn't know it was going to be like this. And then they fell in love with them and fought for them to become, and they became a real family. And it's, it's, it's based on, you know, the film is based on his experience. And, and then I met so many kids in the system and I, you know, I thought, wow, it's such a powerful thing. I mean, everybody needs and deserves a family and to be loved and to be cared for. Um, and, and a home. And so I was always encouraging as many people as possible to open their hearts if they could open their homes and adopt children. I mean, yeah, there are so many kids in the system. So big, big shout out to all the families out there who adopt kids. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, I really take my hat. That's, again, you know, we're talking about heroes, right? Real heroes. Um, you know, people get put on a pedestal for, for certain things and, and, you know, not enough people get the credit that they deserve, like for adopting children out of foster care, for going to work during this pandemic and putting their families and their own health at risk uh, at the exchange. I mean, or, you know, working on the front lines at hospitals, you know, um, people, people, uh, it's, it's good because people are really like now understanding what a real hero looks like, um, brave men and women who get, to get up every day to do a job that most people take for granted. Uh, but, you know, uh, hopefully people now will see the importance of uh, expressing our appreciation for people who do things that, um, you know, we took for granted for so long. Mm -hmm. 
Well, we're gonna we're gonna keep it going without this movie, Pat. Someone asked, uh, any plans for you to join the Fast and Furious franchise, maybe in the tenth and final movie? <laughs> uh, no, it hasn't come up yet. So I don't know. I don't know. That, that's a, that's a no. Um, and also, got some cool things in the pipeline, though. Um, next question. You know, with six billion dollar man, um, we have this other uh, great idea that's that, that that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, so, but we want to do stuff that's, you know, more, a little more grounded, uh, character driven, but like even Six Billion Dollar Man have, have all the wish fulfillments of like a superhero movie without having to put on a cape. You know, I don't think I could come out of the trailer and, and be confident in one of those, uh, those superhero costumes, you know, had I do something that's a little more grounded, a little more, you know. You know, but um, but they've had an amazing, what an amazing success they've had. I mean, my gosh, that I think they won their ninth ninth installment. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, uh, hey, so check this out, Mark. I was actually reading the news, right, and it said Tiger King was watched by 64 million households, 64 million, and there's one movie that beat that out. Do you know what movie that was? Uh, that would be Spencer Confidential. 85 million viewers. Yeah. Awesome. Incredible. Incredible. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where we had never worked uh, with Netflix. We just, you know, uh, you know, we thought great script. And, you know, people people decide when and where and how they want to view their content now. It just is what it is. I mean, I also, I love the experience, and I hopefully will get back to it soon because I love to drive down to the movie theater, walk in the theater, buy a ticket, and go and sit next to people and react and laugh with people and cry with people. But people also like in this, in this very time that we're living in right now, people at home being able to share experiences like that. Um, you know, it was an awesome experience. I mean, the, the, the reaction of the movie was absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, people loved, loved, loved the movie, and it came at a good time. It was, it was funny and edgy, and you know, throwback to those old kind of great buddy comedies, and it reminded me of like a Lethal Weapon, you know, where um, you know you kind of had it all. Uh, there was high stakes, you know, but a lot of humor, uh, a lot of emotion, and and the guy you guys you could root for, you know, guys you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah, no, that's my guy. He's gonna, no, he's gonna get him. He's gonna get him. You know, like four brothers and movies like that. You know, I love those kind of characters. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And there's a guy who just cannot stand by to see injustice happen. You know, he's gonna fight for the people that can't fight for themselves, uh, even if it means him going to prison, right? Uh, which he did, and he gets out in the beginning of the movie, and then he's like, I'm getting out of here, I'm going to Arizona. He ain't going nowhere. You know something's going to happen. He's going to get sucked <laughs> in. And, you know, uh, love, love, love that character. So that yeah, was fun. And, and you left it open at the end. Yes. Yeah, we're, yes, we're, 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 you did. Uh, the next one right now. We're, Are you? Awesome. Right now. Oh, that's exciting. <laughs> in stages, but, um, but yeah, we're, uh, we're working on it now. We got a great, great idea. Um, so I'm excited about it. So quick question for us, you know, I'm in the military, Lee and Judy work for the exchange, a lot of our audience is military members. A lot of us don't get to work on Hollywood sets. What's the difference between working with Netflix to make a movie and working with one of those big Hollywood studios to make a movie? Is there a difference or is it similar? There's no difference. I mean, all the people that work at Netflix were all very, very, uh, you know, successful people in the movie business, you know? Um, so they're all there. And I think the great thing about it is you got a little more freedom because if you're, if you're doing all the right things, they kind of leave you alone. And if not, they'll come in and give you the help that you need. Um, and uh, no, I found the experience to be just as satisfying, if not more. I think they, they did an amazing job. They've got super talented executives over there. Uh, and they were also not scared to make a movie that a studio wouldn't normally make, you know? Um, studios are like, they're making these big budget, hopefully giant franchise, ten pole movies, or they're making little movies that they hope to get awards consideration at the end of the year. And that kind of in-between movie uh, was kind of, I don't know, it didn't exist anymore. And so for Netflix uh, to say, well, yeah, we'll take a swing like that, you know, uh, it was it was awesome. Wow. Mark, we're getting a couple questions. People want to know if you're going to be at the Army-Navy game this year. What do you say? Uh, I hope to. I hope, first of all, I hope we all can be there. Um, nobody, yes. 
Uh, you know, there's been lots of speculation. Um, we have the people that are all about doom and gloom and think that we'll never get to go to a sporting event again. And then you have people who think we should all just say, no matter what, throw caution to the wind and go. Uh, I'm hoping that we could be there. What an experience. Uh, it was absolutely awesome. I mean, I've been to Super Bowls and everything else. I never saw that kind of energy and that excitement. And if I said I was going one way or the other, then I was in trouble. <laughs> you know, I was like, <laughs> you know, who to root for? I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, I got all my heart saying, you know, who you got to root for, right? And then I got Marcus and those guys saying, man, don't know. That you, I've been on a senior army hat on you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm rooting for everybody. We asked you that on live. We asked you that on on our live from there, and you had the perfect answer of you're rooting for both teams. Yeah, I, I tell you, it's like so. And then just to put that into perspective, because how much I appreciate anybody who serves um, in any branch of our military. Um, now, if the Patriots were playing the Tampa Bay Bucks, <laughs> I'm wearing the Patriots. All the way. I am a patriot all the way. Uh, now, if it's the box against anybody else, I would love to see my guys win. You know, those are my guys. Tom and Gronk, those are my guys. So I would love to see them be successful. But if it came down to it, it's like I played Vince Papali, um, who was a great Eagle um, in Invincible, and that was a proud moment for me. And when the Eagles played the Patriots in the Super Bowl, it was like, okay, great. Now, I don't have somebody that I absolutely dislike. So if they were to win, I'd be happy for them. I still want the Patriots to win. But, uh, you know, it, 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 even that scenario, you know, with the Army-Navy game, I am so neutral. It's not even fun. Before we go, Mark, we I want to share a couple more comments. So we have had a few comments um, from some Gold Star families, and those are families who um, their service member has paid the ultimate sacrifice. Um, and so they are – they are expressing thanks and gratitude to you for your support for the military community. So I wanted to make sure we pass that on to you. Thank you. Uh, and and uh, thank you again. And, you know, you guys are all in my thoughts and my prayers. And then I have one more. Here, Go ahead, Leah. Go first. Cause I got, I'm going to spitfire these questions. Okay. Frank is an Army vet. It was his son's 12th birthday yesterday. Could you wish him a happy birthday? His name is Jacob, and he's from New Mexico. Jacob from New Mexico, happy birthday, buddy. Um, you know, my son uh, turned 14 during this time and didn't get to have his party with his friends and everything else. But, uh, you know, hopefully this will be over soon and you'll be back to hanging out with your friends and get to celebrate a proper birthday. I promise my son that after this, we'll take him and all his friends wherever they want to go. As long as he's behaving and doing his online schooling, and we'll tear it up. So, uh, Jacob, happy birthday, buddy, and uh, hopefully you get to do the same when all this is over. Speaking of online schooling, someone earlier asked, what are you doing to help your kids? Uh, how, how involved are you with homeschooling during the pandemic? Um, if it's anything to do with math uh, or English or history, I'm, I'm good. It depends on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on the subject, I got to tell you. You know, we all know that school, unless you're in it all the time, you, a lot of that that information is not retained. So my wife's the teller of the family, and uh, I, I can figure out the math. All right, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm asking some quick questions. So I, 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 I wrote a couple down while you were ch chatting. Somebody wants to know where they can buy your Wahlburger Jordan 4s from. Oh my gosh! You know that that that, that is a very difficult question. <laughs> I only have two pair myself. They made twenty three pair. Um, Jimmy Butler was asked to to, to uh, sell his for for literally thirty thousand dollars. It's like it's one oh of those gosh. crazy things. If you can find some on eBay, maybe now you know. Obviously, in a, in a situation like this, uh, with the downturn in the economy, maybe somebody will come uh, and sell them for a lot cheaper. But I don't have any. I've gotten yelled at by my brothers and family members, like, why don't I get these shoes? I was talking to, you know who Taco Fall is? Plays for the Celtics. He's 7'5", seven, seven tallest guy in the league, number 99 on the Celtics. And I was talking to him yesterday. I'm like, man, what size shoe do you got? He said, 22. I was like, 22? <laughs> I said, who made Where? He said, Nike. He said, there's never been a Jordan shoe made that big. 
So I was talking to the guys at Jordan brand because we're, we're, we're designing another shoe. And so I said, um, we got to make a 22. We got to make a 22 for Taco. 22. I was wow. like, oh, my God. One, wow. of, one of the sweetest guys you ever want to meet. I think, uh, I think he's ended up being a big star. He's got a great work ethic. And uh, I think he's going to become a star in the NBA. Well, there, there you go. You heard it. About 30 grand. If you can find it on eBay, maybe a little bit cheaper now. Another Next. question. Uh, what was your dream job growing up as a kid? Dream job growing up as a kid? Oh, my gosh. So I just did a Zoom chat with the with the Celtics, right? And talking to all the players. That's how the taco conversation started. So I, I applied to be a ball boy at the Boston Garden. I went down there, filled out an application, everything. Didn't hear a peep. Didn't even get a response. So uh, <laughs> I'd say the ideal job was driving driving truck with my dad. I would be 13 years old. He put me on his lap. He wasn't supposed to be doing this, but you know, a 13 speed, double clutch, he'd let me drive, um, you know, hanging out with my dad, delivering uh, school lunches and delivering whatever he was uh, delivering at the time uh, with his job as a teamster. But, sp but spending time with him, that was that was probably the best. That's awesome. And then uh, we got, we got a, a, a funny question here. Somebody asked, is the hat you have on to hide the quarantine cut? No. <laughs> Originally, when I woke up, I thought, okay, we're doing this at 12 o'clock. I'm having breakfast at 1030. Cindy's like, no, this is at, this is at 11. I was like, oh, oh get, go get me a hat. <laughs> I didn't want to, you know. I know, listen, in the military community, you know, we're supposed to keep it nice and tight and clean. You know, you got to show, you can't look, show up looking all raggedy. Oh, you looking good. You're looking good. That was the first thing you told me, Chief. <laughs> Leah, you got anything else? Julie, you got any more comments? Somebody's asking if you're going to make another Transformer movie. She says her boys want to know. Uh, there's no plans right now. I don't know what their plan is. I know after uh, we did the last installment, they went and made Bumblebee. I think they're trying to kind of revamp the whole franchise. So I don't I don't really know where they are with that right now. Um, so kind of I've just been working on the things that I've had in development and that I've been doing myself. So. Excellent. Those Julie, do you have any? Take a long time. Why is that? Effects. The effects? Yeah. The effects, the, just the schedule, the scope of the movie. I mean, that's, that's like a big six-month commitment. So. Somebody is also asking about another daddy's home. Uh, you know, Will and I talked about doing something else. I don't know if we'll do another daddy's home, but maybe we'll do another. We, we've got a couple of other great ideas um, for comedies uh kind of like he had this one amazing idea it, it was kind of in the vein of like a midnight run um thus get stuck together um uh, <laughs> but he's always coming up with some crazy ideas so i'd love to work with him again soon i don't know if it would be a daddy's home but uh but something julie do you have anything oh i was asking if you had any questions you noticed oh uh, world and all over the country and they're just thanking you for your support of the, the military community so thank you thank you for spending some time with us today we, we appreciate it very much thank thank all of you I really Mark, before we go before we go this is your chance right here put in the plug whatever you're doing you know uh performance inspired f45 ball burgers whatever you want to let the world know let them know what's going on in your life and, and what to be on the lookout for this is your, your chance right here okay well the most important thing right now in my life and my world is you guys thank you thank you thank you thank you families thank you for your hard work your sacrifice your un unwavering support of our great nation i love you guys and thank you that's all that matters right now uh everybody who's out there who's deployed come home soon come home safe um thank you from the bottom of my heart Thank you, thank you, Mark. I know you know you know this means a lot to the military community. We appreciate it. Tons of love on the net right now on Facebook. Lots of questions, lots of love, lots of likes. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. We know you're busy, so we greatly appreciate it. The Exchange family greatly greatly appreciates it. So thank you so much. Thanks, man. I can't wait to see you again in person. I know when we were hanging out in Texas, we were having a lot of laughs. Yeah. <laughs> and I look forward to seeing all of you guys soon. Really, thank hope you to guys. see you at the Army Navy game. We hope you. Oh man, God willing, yes. It's nice being neutral. You don't have any stress. I go to a Patriots game. I can't eat. 
my stomach's upset. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Like, I'm just going to have fun, you know? And seeing the energy and the excitement and all the, all the service men and women, it's, it's amazing. That's a fun game. Hey, thank yeah. you, Mark. And I look forward, uh, we're going to contact with you for Mario to put, get him on here. Oh, absolutely. I, I'll set that up with, with Tom. Thank you. Yeah, whatever you guys need. Awesome. Hey, you're the best. You're the best, Mark. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much.